Welcome back to Switched to Linux. We are going to do here another top five, and of course this is going to be a downloaded one, I know it. Top five reasons I, subjectively, believe that GNOME sucks. <laughs> so, um, I'm not a big fan of the desktop environment, and some people in the comments have actually criticized, like, oh, you just get, need to know how to use it, or whatever else. It's like, no, I know how to use it. I use GNOME a lot, on a lot of different distros. It's not my preference. Um, I use it on Tails when I'm on Tails, obviously, no problems. I've used it on a lot of other systems. You know, I am not a stranger to how this desktop environment works. And these are subjective, non-hateful, but subjective reasons why I believe that the GNOME desktop is not really the best desktop for a computer system. So we're going to go ahead and jump on into this. Number one, the GNOME desktop has an unintuitive interface. And uh, by unintuitive interface, I mean that it doesn't have an, an interface that a lot of people would find easy to use. It doesn't feel like you know what you're doing out of the box. This is one of those things that Apple did with, with the iPhone, the iPad is just, you could take it, you could open up the box without reading into documentation or whatever else, you could understand how the system worked. You didn't need to a hand holding through it. And GNOME is the complete opposite of that. They managed to take all of the UI stuff that I personally think is terrible, but it's up to up to your own opinion. And they took all of the awful UI stuff and then they added it to an environment that is so hard to use without reading the documentation. It's to the point that where hotkeys aren't where the hotkeys you know, are, it's not the same keys you're used to. It's uh, the, men, the meta key pulls up the activities bar, which is actually rather annoying. So I can get the activity screen just by hitting my meta key, or I can hold my meta key and hit S. I don't know why we have two metas for that. Um, you can do just getting too close to the, um, getting too close to the corner pulls it up. Of course, I can click on the activities and pull it up. There's so many ways to get to that activity screen, which to me is a fairly annoying screen. We'll talk about that more in a bit. But the interface, you have to actually stop and read the documentation on how to actually get your, um, on, on how to actually get your shortcuts going. So here's how to use the shortcuts. You'll notice that I put it up in the keyboard, uh, in the, uh, the toolbar up here in Firefox, just so I can remember it. Uh, it's not that I don't know how to use the system. I mean, I can get to my uh, my applications menu there and, you know, whatever else. So you can actually move around this if you get used to it. And if this is an environment you want to use, you'll get used to it pretty quick. But you still have to pretty much force yourself to use a fairly unintuitive environment. And that's kind of the, the, the issue I'm going to talk about there. Number two is our system resources. This desktop environment takes a lot of resources. Now, right now, I am recording a video and I have a camera running, so the resources are higher now than they are at rest. But even at rest, this system takes about a gig of memory, which is quite a bit. Now, I realize a lot of your modern computers are coming with you know, a lot more memory. So it's okay to say this, but this is that very thing. Brian Lund Duke talked about this, about how much memory the internet takes just to run. And it's like, just because computers have more memory doesn't mean you need the environment to take that much more memory. Uh, because if I want to install this on a, on a, you know, a lower memory computer or whatever else, uh, it's not going to work well. Even this computer, which has six gigs of RAM, it's slow and it's laggy and you feel it and it's hurts because I put a lot of other environments on here and it's snappy. And so that's just one of those things to keep in mind is this is heavy on resources. Number three, the default hot corner in the top left of the screen cannot be disabled without extensions and it's way too sensitive. You get even remotely close to the top and you got the stupid screen here you got to deal with. In which case, you either have to click on something or hit your meta key to make the thing go away. I think you might be able to th go 
back up there in the corner. But the problem I encounter um, is on several of the distros where I'm running the GNOME desktop, if I just go up there to try and access the menu, or I even try and go up here and do something on this menu here, it triggers. And it just triggers way too much. Not as much on Solace as it as it does on um, on some other distros, but it's still enough to get so annoying. And why can I not go into the settings and just turn that stupid thing off? But you can't. So you're kind of stuck with that really, really annoying hot corner. Unless, of course, you want to carry on with my next point. Point number four, you cannot customize this thing. You don't like the ugly black bar at the top of the screen? Too bad, you're stuck with it. Even at the bottom screen, I like having the uh, the taskbar windows down here so I can quickly navigate to options here without going into you know this screen here, which is rather annoying to me. Um, but even this, it's so uncustomizable, I have to put an extension down here, and the extension gives me this nice skeuomorphic design, which I like, but it doesn't mesh with the overall flat design that, that GNOME has by default. And so, it looks like it's thrown together, because that's how it is. There are a lot of extensions with GNOME that you can use to customize it and do the things you want to do to it, but they're all piecemated together with a lot of different things. It's kind of like writing a program by copying and pasting code out of Stack Exchange. Because I can get in there and turn off my annoying hot corner if I want. But what it takes is I have to come into the tweak tool. Oh, where are you? To go into the tweak tool. Uh, which some distros don't install by default, some of them do, and I actually have to come in here and I have to launch um, or install my no top corner extension to turn that on. Now it works beautifully. If I want the dash to dock, so I actually have a dock, I have to install a uh, an extension for that. There's just so many little things that I have to install extensions for, and the problem is that the extensions are not built with the same core as GNOME, and so it looks, as much as you might customize it with extensions, it looks like you just copied a bunch of stuff and pasted it in, because it just doesn't always match the UI or the feeling. Now, not to say that extensions are bad. Um, I love the caffeine extension that I can put the extension up here and it works wonderfully on GNOME, which is particularly good on this distro because I can't actually get in there and change the time for the screen timeout, which is rather annoying. Um, and so there are, there, the only way to customize this thing is with a bunch of extensions, but then we end up with a whole bunch of things that seem thrown together at the last minute. But we don't have any real customization outside of going in and manually editing config files, which is rather annoying. And uh, most of us don't have the time or knowledge to know how to do that. And my number five is just lack of organization. I'm not specifically OCD, but do you remember back in those Windows XP, Windows 95, 98, 2000 XP years? And you'd go over to somebody's house because, of course, you're the computer geek. And people are like, yeah, you can come over and have a look. And you're like, oh, yeah, I'll come over, have a look, have some coffee, chat a little bit, look at the computer. And you push the start menu and you got this monstrosity of crap because they've installed a hundred different programs that all install not only a desktop icon, but also its own menu in the start me start menu, which each only had one item in the folder. And so you pull up the start menu and it had a hundred thousand completely disorganized things. Well, welcome to the wonderful new application launcher from GNOME, which is just completely unorganized. Not to mention it just gives me those ugh, feelings of Mac. Um, but you don't really have a way of organizing this. You can go into the tweak tool and you can put up an applications menu at the top. So the applications menu, you can edit and adjust that. But as far as if I, I mean, I haven't really installed a lot. I don't use, install a lot. But if I want to install like 15, 20, 30 programs like I might have on some of my other computers, this just becomes a hot and happy mess. And here's the challenge that it kinds to a way, a road away at our structure as organized computer users. And it just gets us too used to a search bar. So it's like if I wanted to do, for example, um, GIMP, I have to come up here and I could do this or I could do it in this screen, whatever screen, and I can just type in GIMP. Now I can get to it by searching for it. 
But what starts to happen is it gives us this over-reliance on the search bar for something that should very easily be quickly organizable. And so when you get this applications launcher that is no organization, all of the icons are there, albeit they are there in alphabetical order, we have frequent, which you can use for that, even my frequent if I'm using a lot of the different applications on my computer, even the frequent applications, it just becomes a giant mess. Now I can quickly see and spot things from the icons, but at the same time, it, if I'm looking for a program that I don't frequently use, I mean, if I frequently use it, it's going to be on my launcher. I only come in here for an application that I don't frequently use. Now I have to remember where it is or what the icon is or anything else. And so we have this giant disorganized, unorganized, at least in an Apple, I can throw things into folders. I don't think I can do that on this. Yeah. I know there are ways of doing folders, but um, it just kind of becomes this hot and happy, unorganized mess in the application launcher. So those are kind of my reasons why I don't like GNOME. Like I said, this is ra rather subjective, but a lot of people, we're used to how our computers work. Now I use this computer here with a lot of different desktop environments so that I can learn how to do better systems and, and, and better ways of, of working on the computers. But at the same token, no matter all these different desktops that I try out, I always go back to Cinnamon on Linux or Mate on Linux or XFCE on Linux because it has a familiar layout that I can easily customize that does everything I need it to do that I can work way faster than I can work on the GNOME desktop. So that is my top five reasons I don't like the GNOME desktop. Why I just don't think it's a particularly good one. Now if you love it, Tell me why you love it in the comments below. That's cool. I don't completely hate this thing. I see it. I would love this on a touchscreen tablet. I think on a touchscreen computer, this would be awesome. This would be absolutely awesome for a phone, you know, anything like that. So like the, the Libre 5 phone that's coming out, uh, the, the, the Librem 5, excuse me, phone that's coming out. GNOME is the primary desktop they're using. That would be an awesome application for it. And I would love it on that. Um, but as far as on this, eh, not so much. <laughs> so those are my top five reasons why I just do not like the GNOME desktop for those people who were curious. So thank you for watching. If you'd like to help support what we're doing, you can check out switchtolinux.com forward slash support and learn about all the ways you can help support the channel. Thank you very much for watching and hope that you enjoy switching to Linux.